good thing to be in the house of the Lord. David said that he'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness or wicked men. We are glad that we can uh, make the time to come in God's house. Brethren, it is a sacrifice to serve the Lord. <laughs> to serve God, it's a sacrifice, you know. You, you, you got to be prepared to give up your time. You got to be prepared to make whatever sacrifice so that you can do whatever the Lord asks us to do. If you're doing something for God and it doesn't cost you anything, it will worth nothing to God. Whatever we give to God, whether it's time or money or whatever we give to God, it must cost us something. God is not looking for no leftover, you know. <laughs> uh, sometimes you have people come over at your place and maybe you want to give them some food, but you want to give them some leftover. God don't want no leftover. You know, like you have your kid and your kid sucking on something and then you say, give me a little piece. And they, they wouldn't give it to you when it's fresh. But when they suck up on it and they, you know, please themselves, then they will want to give it to you. God is not in the business of taking things like that. Whenever we give God something, it must cost us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. It caused God His only begotten Son. The unique Son of God. God didn't have any more sons. That is His unique Son. We know we are sons of God, but we are not unique sons of God. God only have one unique Son, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And He gave Him up. The Bible said he didn't even spare his own son, but he delivered him up. He offered him up. How much more would he not give us all things? Praise God. I want to thank God today that we can come together in God's house and we can rejoice together in the presence of God. God is good. And uh, Brother uh, Davis, oh, he does add, um, especially today. <laughs> Amen. God is good all the time and he's especially good to us today. We are grateful that we could be here today. Um, I got a call from the property manager that um, they had flooding down here. <laughs> and I said, oh no. He said, Eric, you better go and check your building. <laughs> better go and check your building to see what's going on. <laughs> Immediately I called Brother Cole. I called uh, Brother uh, Tony, Brother Davis. I said, guys, what are you got to go over there and see what's going on. Brother Cole, he came over here for us and, you know, he gave us the good news that everything was okay. He said, we are safe. <laughs> Amen. I, we praise God. Uh, he said, uh, um, we are safe. And um, we thank the Lord um, that we, well, when the last time we had the flood in here, we do whatever we know we can do so that, you know, we can try to um, avoid that flooding. We took up the carpet. We tried to, um, you know, put down some... Well, I asked, um, I asked around, and it's a good thing I talked to um, Brother John. I talked to Fordy, and he was saying, Pastor Duncan, use hydraulic cement. And I, I firmly believe is the stuff that we put down there that prevent the water from coming up because the church next door had the same problem. Uh, they, they have flooding. So we want to thank God that, well, that we are spared because it costs us. A couple hundred dollars the last time to rip that up, put it back in, plus the labor from the guys in the church. So we, we, we have a lot to thank God for. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good to us, and we want to give him thanks. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I greet you in Jesus' name. Um, we are going to continue in our study of the book of Ephesians. We are in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, we are going to pick up from as I said, that, that's what we are doing in, in straight gate ministries we just go into the word of God and um, just simply explain the word of God it, it, they will have any kind of um, you know uh, you may not see things that take place in other ministry here, you know we probably don't jump around as much but what we try to do, we try to explain the Bible and try to understand what the Word of God is saying. And I, as I keep saying to you guys, goosebump is not going to get you into heaven. Goosebump is not... When you get all, all the goosebump people get in church, that is not going to help them to resist the devil. You can't resist Satan with goosebumps. 
can't, no. <laughs> the Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. You have to have the word of God to resist Satan. You have to know on what grounds, when you stand against the devil, you have to have some word to give to him. Even Jesus, Jesus, Jesus couldn't just, you know, say, Satan, shoo, shoo, shoo. No, <laughs> Jesus had to pull out the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live. And that's the reason why we, we are taking the time in this ministry so that people could understand the word of God. Even though the book of John may take us until Jesus come, praise God. You know, uh, we're not in no hurry to, to finish no book. Uh, we, we are here to understand the word of God. And I say, guys, uh, I, I love what you're doing. We, we must continue to do that, continue to study the Bible. You know, as I said, you can't just depend on what you hear from the pulpit. You know, um, once we read the word of God and we are not going astray because the Bible is supposed to be read and understand line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. We are not just jumping and take any old thing that we have out there. <laughs> you know, whenever you, 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 you bring something to our attention, it must be based on the Word of God. And that is what we are trying to do. We are trying to build up each other. Amen. Build each other up in the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And we give God thanks today. Praise the Lord. We are going to pick up from, um, from verse 5 of chapter 5 of Ephesians. Praise the Lord. We bow heads in prayer. God, I thank you today for the blessings that you poured out upon us. We thank you for the worship. Thank you, Lord, for the glory of God upon the lives of your people. God, you promised to bless us in our going out, in our coming in. And God, we are here today to receive more blessings from you. As we open up the word of God, we pray for discernment and revelation. Our understanding, Lord, God will be clear Father God, the word of God will be rightly divided as we stand in the presence of your people. The Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts today through your words. You will have your way in the midst of your people in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Glory to God. It said, for this you know that no homongous, nor unclean person, nor uh, covetous man who is an idolater had any inheritance in the kingdom of, of Christ and of God. We touched on that last week. And I just like to say that God have the right, He have the prerogative to say who He will allow into His kingdom. You know, I have, me and my wife, we have our home and, you know, we have a right to say who we want to allow to come into our home. And even though you say, well, you're not supposed to, do, I'm going to go to the government and get some kind of law against that. The government can't tell us who we are to allow to come into a home. And when you have something and you have rights over it, you can use your judgment to do whatever you want with that um, particular property. And heaven belongs to God. And He has the right to say who He will allow and uh, what kind of a um, qualification or what kind of a, um, what, what you need to reach up to, what measures you need to take so that you can enter into his kingdom. I remember Jesus was given a parable and he was talking about um, um, a king that invites uh, people to come to his banquet and he gave them uh, the, the clothes to put on. And uh, this guy, he, didn't, he chose not to put on his wedding garment. You know, maybe his, the garment that he wore probably maybe was more expensive. Maybe it was looking better than the wedding garment that the king gave to him. But the king required wedding garment and he gave out his own wedding garment. And lo and behold, this guy decided that he's going to, maybe he dress up. Maybe he was sparkling in his whatever suit he had on, but it was not a wedding garment. It was not the king's wedding garment. And he went into the banquet hall. And as soon as the king came in, he spot him. He knew that this guy wasn't supposed to be there because everybody else have on their wedding garment. And he gave commandment to his servant to bung him hand and feet and throw him out into outer darkness. And the Bible said that there should be weeping and gushing of teeth. And when we refuse to acknowledge the way that God lay out for us and we say, well, you know, we don't need to do this or we can get by by doing this or whatever, God will hold us responsible. So God have a right to 
say who he will allow into his kingdom. And the Bible tells us that we have to have clean hands. We must have pure hearts. Our heart must be right with God. For us to enter into the kingdom of God, we must be born again. Brethren, unless you are born again, you are not going to make it into the kingdom of God. Um, Nicodemus experienced that when he went to Jesus by night. And he tried to pat Jesus on the shoulder and say, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God and no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus could have said, Nicodemus, that's good man. And, but Jesus just point him and say, unless you be born again, you are not going to even see the kingdom of God. You can't even enter the kingdom of God. So brethren, for any person to go into God's kingdom, we must be born again. How can a person be born again? To be born again, you have to acknowledge your sins. You have to confess your sins. Ask God to forgive you. Invite Jesus to come into your heart. And he makes you a new person. Doesn't matter what the Catholic priests say. Catholic priests can't get nobody into God's kingdom. No tree, uh, Haley, Mary, or whatever they just tell you to say, to, you know, can't get anybody into God's kingdom. You have to be born again. You have to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that's the only time we are going to enter into God's kingdom. So anything that is not pleasing in God's sight, uh, where all of these sexual sins that the Bible talks about, we must stay away from these things. When you become born again, you must have holy vessel. Your, your, your life must be holy. If you are not married where sex is concerned, you must be pure. You know, you are married, you, you, you have to be devoted and committed to one person, that one person that you are in covenant with. And we have to live holy lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Let no man deceive you. So, you know, the, the scripture is saying, don't let anybody deceive you with vain words, empty words. And empty words, they're vain words, is words that doesn't have the truth in it. Any conversation, any words that doesn't have the truth in it, doesn't measure up to the word of God, doesn't matter who it is coming from, it is empty. Praise God. It is vain words. And the Bible said, because of these things come at the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. We don't want to be categorized as children of disobedience. We want to be um, in the bracket of children who obey God. The Bible says, if we are willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. Brother Telesword, he always testify about the goodness of God. And when we are willing, when we are obedient, God will make sure that we have his goodness. His goodness will be upon us. David said he had never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. God will look after his people when we are obedient to him. Brethren, it takes a sacrifice to obey God. To obey God, we must make the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Be ye not therefore partaker with them. So the scripture is saying here that um, don't let anybody deceive you with vain words, empty words, words that doesn't have any truth. You know, it might sound good, but it's not, there's no truth about it. Because the Bible tells us, the scripture warns us and tells us in the last days that people are going to believe a lie than rather believe in the truth. Amen. It talks about a strong delusion that will hit the world. And we are experiencing this today where people will believe a lie than believe in the truth. Hallelujah. But the Bible said in verse 7, Be ye therefore, uh, be not ye therefore partaker with them. Don't throw in your towel with them. Don't support people who want to um, give out uh, empty words and give you instruction that is not in line with the word of God. As we keep saying in this ministry, when we are listening and taking instruction from anybody, it doesn't matter what title they have, if what they are saying doesn't measure up to the word of God, it is garbage. And we must not pay no attention to anything that is not in line with the word of God. doesn't matter how much a person says, well, the Lord told me so, or I have this revelation. 
If your revelation is not in line with the word of God, it is garbage. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for revelation. We thank God for vision. But all of the visions and all of the revelation, it must line up with the word of God. If it's not lined up with the word of God, brethren, we pay no attention to it. Praise the Lord. For the Bible tells us, for ye was sometime darkness. It's talking about our former life. War is in the past. It means that that is our past life. That is how we were living. And some of us here, we can uh, testify to the fact, the life that we used to live before we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But it is all in the past. We cannot go back to that past life. We cannot associate ourselves with the way that we were living before we acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. For you are sometimes darkness. In other words, the darkness there represents the sinful lifestyle that we were living. But now I light in the Lord. We have been changed. There is a transition taking place. Any man who is in Christ is a new creature. All things are past that we behold. All things become new. If you are born again, you, you must turn over a new leaf. You have to leave the old things behind. Praise the name of the Lord. You have to go forward in serving the Lord. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Brethren, God is expecting us to live up to a standard. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So it's said that we were darkness, but now we are light. We are the light of the world. Jesus, when he was here, he said he was the light of the world when he was about to leave. He said, you are the light of the world and we must let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So we are light. We are the one that the world is looking at. Praise the Lord. We are the one who's supposed to provide illumination to the world. Praise God, the dark world, the sinful world that we are living in. We have to stand out. We have to live that life that God requires of us to live before the world. Said, walk as children of light. The, the, the word they walk means to live. Conduct yourself. It's no sense calling yourself Christian if you're not living like one. I give you the um, example about Alexander last week. And if you are not living like a Christian, it's a waste of time carrying the name. Might as well give it up. Brethren, if you're going to be a Christian, be the best one. Don't be no, as the Jamaican use that word, the finky, finky kind of Christian. You know, any kind of how Christian. Be a good one. Hallelujah. Live to the best of your knowledge and ability. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For it said... In verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Now, here um, he's telling us that um, we are children of light and we have to walk as children of light. So children of light, is gonna pro, uh, uh, they're going to have fruits. Uh, if you are a child of light, you are going to produce fruit. You can't be a Christian without producing fruit. When you become born again, you start to grow. Every Christian must grow. The Bible said, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. The way we grow is when we meditate upon the word of God. Is when we commit ourselves to studying God's words and putting it into operation. Hallelujah. Uh, James said, be ye uh, doers of the word and not hearers only. If any man is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man who behold his natural face in a glass. And he behold his, himself goeth his way straightway. He forgot what manner of person he was. 
But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man or woman shall be blessed in all of his deeds. So God is saying here, if you are a child of light, you are going to bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. So he said in verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. And what this is saying here, our character is going to shine forth. Whatever you claim to be, it's, it's going to manifest yourself. If you are a Christian, it can't hide. You can't be a Christian and, and hide yourself. Once you say you're a Christian, it's going to show, it starts showing. And if you're not, it's going to show too. And for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. What goodness is talking about here? The good character that he's talking about here that should come from the child of God is to be good to your fellow men. You show goodness. One of the characteristics of being a Christian is that you are going to be good to your neighbor. You're going to be good to your fellow man. You see, um, uh, church attendance, having a good church attendance and uh, having your name on the church roll, and paying your tithes, and being baptized, all of that is good. But none of that doesn't really say, if you comply with all of that, it doesn't say that you're a Christian. You are not a Christian because you baptize. You are not a Christian because you attend church regular. You are not a Christian because you, 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 you contribute to the church, and stuff like that. That doesn't make you a Christian. Hallelujah. This is the characteristic, this is the three characteristics that God said in his word that identify us as being, you know, producing fruit, fruits as children of light. He said the first one will be that we will have goodness. You will be good to other people. You will be honorable when you're dealing with other people. You will be respectful when you're dealing with other people. You will be considerate when you're dealing with other people. Hallelujah. As a Christian, when you deal with people, you will have compassion. Don't ever make it be said towards you, man, have a heart. No. You're, going through, you're doing something to somebody, a person to cry out to you. Uh, have a heart. If somebody has to tell you have a heart, you really need to have a heart as a Christian. Hallelujah. We must deal with people honorable and with compassion and with mercy and with goodness and righteousness. Righteousness is towards God. And he's saying that we have to serve God in righteousness. We have to do what is pleasing in the sight of God. The Bible said, be holy even as our heavenly Father is holy. Brethren, God require of us to be holy, to live a holy life, a devoted life, a consecrated life, a life that is pleasing in God's sight. This is not just for ministers, it is for every one of us. Hallelujah. All of us who confess to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, He require of us that we serve Him in righteousness. Hallelujah. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Other characteristics here is truth. So as a child of God, the way people identify you as a Christian, you must be an honorable person. You must be a man or woman of integrity. Today, people uh, in, in, in the church today, you, you, you could hardly find men and women of integrity. People who will give their word and it doesn't matter what comes. When you as a child of God, if you give your word to do something or to show up somewhere, don't, don't let that um, day pass and you just calmly turn your back on your appointment without calling and telling the person, listen, um, I can't make it, something come up, you have to release me from this pledge. You know, but we see people today, they will say things, and they will make commitment to do things, and they never show up, they never say nothing, it just, just, uh, they just sweep it away. But brethren, when you are born again, and you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, integrity must be a part of your life. You must be a man or woman of integrity. You must be a person of your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto God. So here he's saying that we are children of light and we have to produce fruit. But then what he's telling us in verse 10 is that after you produce your fruit, <laughs> your fruit has to go through examination. The word they prove means to examine. Our lives must be examined. What we are producing, brethren, the life that we live, it will be examined. And we have to expect that people are going to examine us. Brethren, I want to let you know, if you confess to be a Christian, the spotlight is upon you. People are looking at you. If you don't want people to look at you, don't go on the job and tell them you're a Christian. You go on the job and start, oh, you know, man, I'm a Christian and I pray three times a day and all of that. As soon as you start telling them that, they look every little uh, mistake that you make, it will be highlighted. You are going to be under the guns. You are going to be watched. And we don't have to be afraid of that. Because we, our life has to be examined. If we say we are children of God, our life has to meet up to a, a standard and it must be proven. It must be proven. It must be examined. It must be tested. It must be tried so people could know that we are genuine. Hallelujah. What is acceptable unto God? Our life must be acceptable unto God. If it's not acceptable unto God, it will not be received. We are not going to receive any reward. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly and my, re uh, and my, my reward is with me to pay every man according to his work. He said also in uh, Ephesians again, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that serve to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Live a good life, brethren. And when we live a good life that is pleasing, that is acceptable in the sight of God, God will pay us. He will reward us. Verse 11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful workers of darkness. What he's saying is, don't associate. Don't let it be said that, you know, people say, well, you know, I know that he's not a Christian or she's not a Christian. But, you know, he's my best friend or she's my best friend. I don't want no uh, unsaved person to be my best buddy buddy. If he's going to be my best buddy buddy, after a while he's going to be born again. But I'm not going to have no unsaved person in my life going on for years upon years upon years upon years. And I have him as my buddy buddy. And everything he's into, you know, I am, you know, with him. No, the Bible is saying here, hallelujah. And have no fellowship. Don't throw in your toilet with them. Don't associate with, with them, with the unfruitful workers of darkness. So, I guess, in everything, what he's saying here is that you have a friend who is unsaved, or you know somebody who is unsaved, and they are a drug dealer. Don't invite them over into your house. Don't go over in a drug dealer house and say you are going to be buddy-buddy with him and say, well, <laughs> the Bible says we have to go on witness. I am not going into no drug dealer house to witness to them. No, sir, I'm going to find some other way. I am not going to go in there to witness to them. If I know somebody's a gun runner, I am not inviting him in my house. If somebody is a gun runner, I am not letting them leave anything in my house either. The Bible says, don't associate with them. If we follow what the scripture said, brethren, we will never end up in trouble. Could you imagine, you know somebody, a drug dealer, and you're riding around with that person. You say you're a Christian, and you're riding around with somebody who pushing drugs. No, you can't do that. Hallelujah. We have to use wisdom. The Bible said, but rather reprove them. The scripture said, reprove them, correct them, um, show them that they're, 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 what they are doing is wrong. In other words, show them up. And not only in the world, we need to do that. From time to time, you'll see things going on in the church. Things will be happening in the church, and members will be doing things wrong in the church. And... Uh, we, are, we look on and we just watch and see what's going on. And everybody say, I, I don't have, I, it's not my business. So I, I, I'm not going to tell them anything. 
you know, and we totally ignore the situation. And we say, well, is the pastor's job to go and tell him about it? But if you, as a child of God, see another brother doing something or misbehaving or doing something or conducting themselves in a way that is not uh, approved of God, you can't turn a blind eye to it. When you turn a blind eye to wrongdoing, it means that you're throwing the towel with them. Even though you are silent, you see something going on in the church, and you just stay silent and you say, I don't want to have nothing to do with that, no. Me, me don't want that sister to come on me. Me don't want that brother to come on me. And you just stand aside, and you say, well, you know, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. God is going to hold you accountable. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to be uncompromising. I know over the years, you know, because of my stand where the word of God is concerned, I happen not to have a whole lot of friends because if I, if I see something happening, for instance, I'm in this church and I see somebody misbehaving, don't think I'm going to just leave you. I'm going to call you. I'm going to pull you aside and say, listen, you see the way you conduct yourself there as a brother, as a sister, you're not supposed to be like that. And I'm concerned about you. And it's not a, an appropriate way for you to believe, uh, behave. You will never see I in the presence of somebody who say they are Christian and they do something or conduct themselves in a, in a way that is not in line with the word of God. And I totally ignore it. Even though the person is going to get upset, so what? Let them get upset. Hallelujah. We need more John the Baptist in the church. Hallelujah. People who will not be afraid to speak the truth. So many times we just mind our own business and we say, oh, let the pastor take care of it. But every one of us, we're supposed to be our brother's keeper. Amen. Scripture said that. So if you see something happening and you totally ignore it, it means that you're throwing towel with them. You're throwing your towel with them. It means that if you see something going on and you totally ignore it, you are supporting it. Silence to wrongdoing. Anytime wrongdoing is taking place and anybody silent to it, it means that you are supporting it. Hallelujah. Oh God, help us. Praise God. So the scripture said in closing, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So some of these people, some of the things, the activities that they involve in, it's shameful. You can't even talk about it. And we have to be careful what we talk about too. As the Bible talks about, you know, uh, in these verses up here, uh, talk about filthiness, foolish talking and all of us, uh, all of that. We have to be careful what we say um, in, from the pulpit too. We can't just say any and everything from the pulpit. There's something that is not appropriate to say from the pulpit. I don't know if you guys hear about it, but there are some pastors who say that to relate to the world and to reach people, they have to start using the same kind of language that the world is using. So now there are some pastors who will use the four-letter word from the pulpit in their sermon so that they can get more closer and they can relate more to the, 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 the people who are using that kind of language. I say, brethren, that is satanic. It's foolishness. These kind of words have no place in the pulpit. Hallelujah. We have the word of God to preach on. And we have to preach the word, rightly divide the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For it, it's a shame, he said, even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Don't allow yourself to get into shameful activities. Brethren, as a child of God, stay away from shameful things. If you're doing shameful things in secret, after a while, it will come to the light. Be sure, the Bible says, be sure your sins is going to find you out. If I have another woman on the side, it doesn't matter how much I try to cover it up. You know, I'm walking all the way up in Scarborough. Canada is a big place. You know, there's all kind of different corners I could go to. If I have some little girl somewhere out there where I have in a relationship with, it doesn't matter how secret it is, somebody is going to find out. Who knows, maybe the Lord might just lead Andel one of these days. Andel might just decide to, you know, the city just send him up to Scarborough to drop off something. And lo and behold, you see that hanging out somewhere. It could happen. So our sins is going to find us out. Don't do nothing shameful in secret. It's, you see, Satan is so bad, eh? That if you do something in secret, and even though nobody 
well, nobody not around, you don't see nobody. Satan is going to make sure that thing come out. Especially if you're a Christian. Maybe if you're an unsaved person and you do something in secret. Satan is not, he don't really care to really expose you. But if you are born again and you do something in secret, the devil is going to expose you. You know how much people in America was going around with prostitutes during Jimmy Swaggart time? And nobody know anything, nobody hear anything, nobody care about anything. Jimmy Swaggart, whether he did it, yes or no, he just make a little fling with some prostitute. And the devil make sure that that was headline news. Anytime we call ourselves Christian and we get ourselves in these things, the devil is going to make sure that we are exposed. Glory to God. Help us, Father. In closing, it said, um, But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whosoever do it, make manifest is light. So um, once we come to the light, you see the light here is the word of God. God's word is light. And it doesn't matter how dark our life is. When the word of God shines in our life, it's going to bring things to, to, to light. And a lot of times, you know, people will say, well, the minister knows something about me. That's the reason why he's talking about that. You know, and uh, how many times you hear people will accuse me and say, well, Pastor Duncan know this and he talk. That's why he's talking about that. I don't care about what's going on in people's business. When I come here to share the word of God, I spend time in the word of God. I stay by myself for hours. The time my wife will say, Eric, you spent too much time up in that room. I, in that room, and I examine in the word of God. I'm praying. I'm seeking the word of God. I don't take down any notes. I just come here, and I just open up the word of God, and I just speak from the word of God as the Spirit led. I don't have time to have anybody calling me and giving me information about this sister or this brother. I don't preach that kind of way. But the thing is, when I'm here preaching, it doesn't matter who is out there. If there is something the Holy Spirit put in my heart to say, brethren, even though it is something that is going on in your life, I am not going to hesitate and say, hold it back, Pastor Duncan, because sister, this is going to get upset. Brother, that is going to get upset. It's not going to happen. I make a pledge to God that I'm going to rightly divide the word of God, even though it upsets people, even though it causes people to leave the church, I am still going to preach the truth of God's word because the word of God, it will shine a light on every one of us situation. Nobody needs to tell the preachers nothing. The word of God is a sword. Hallelujah. It's a hammer. Hallelujah. It will cut you and also it will heal you. It will break up the rocks, the Bible says, in pieces. So expose yourself to the word of God and God's word, the Bible said, it is good medicine. It will treat every wound that we have in our spirit. God bless us. Uh, the musicians is going to come back and we're going to sing a song. If there's someone here who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we encourage you today to put your trust in him. This is the accepted time, the Bible said. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Today, if you shall hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today could be the last day some of us may be in this church. This might be the last visit. Father, we want to thank you today for your words. We want to thank you because your word, hallelujah, is the light that shines in our hearts. God, we thank you because you said, oh God, our past life was in darkness. God, we just want to thank you for deliverance. You have delivered us from the powers of the darkness of this world and you have translated our life into the kingdom of your dear son in whom we have redemption to your blood, the forgiveness of sins. Oh God, we are grateful to you today. Father, we could have been out there in the street. We could have been the drug pusher. Oh God, the drug addicted person. Lord, we could have been, oh God, in all kinds of different lifestyle. But oh God, you have saved us. You have delivered us. And oh God, we are grateful to you today. We say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for deliverance, oh God. Oh God, give us grace. Give us strength, Lord. To continue, Lord, on this pathway. Lord, in spite of the sacrifices that we will have to make. Help us, oh God, Lord, to make the sacrifice. 
Help us to commit ourselves. God, help us to be faithful. Oh, God, help us not to be influenced by the world. Lord, you said if sinners entice you, consent thou not. Oh, Father, help us, oh, God, Lord, to stand firm. Help us, oh, God, Lord, to live a righteous life, a devoted life. We are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, holy nation, a peculiar people. Oh, God, help us to live up to the standard. Up to the requirement, O oh God, Lord, that is pleasing in your sight, that is acceptable in your sight. Lord, if there's one person here who is not sure if they uh, know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If there's one person here today, Lord, who are not sure of their status with God. They are not sure if their name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord, I pray that you'll make yourself known to them. God, you'll open up their eyes. Let the veil be removed from their eyes. The plugs from their ears. God, even as they leave here and go to their homes during this week, Lord, you will just let the word come back to them. Holy Spirit, do a mighty work in the life of your people today, the chosen one that you have chosen to hear your words, Lord. Do a mighty work in their lives today, we pray. God, I pray for Sister Pierre and Brother Pierre. Lord, remember them, whatever they are going through. I pray in Jesus' name. Sister Davis, Lord, remember her. We send the word towards her. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, every person in this ministry that is struggling, that is going through some difficult time. Lord, we pray for them today that you lift them up. Oh God, remove the burdens, the barriers, the hindrances. In Jesus' name, we pray for clearance. Lord, we speak a word of deliverance over this ministry. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, the windows of heaven will be open. Lord, we pray that the harvest will come in the mighty name of Jesus. Have thine own way, Lord. We thank you and we praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name.